which was around the egg, no more like a millstone, a plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Hey, everyone. Welcome to... <laughs> we'll just jump into it. Uh, a, a new episode of Heart of Horror, uh, a tiny little division of The Dark Parade. I'm Bo, and with me as ever is the the lovely, the talented, the recently be birthdayed Kate Paul. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Hi. <laughs> happy birthday. Thanks. Hey, it's my birthday, and I gotta pick up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was my birthday a couple of weeks ago. Well, uh, what are we on now? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. It feels like forever ago now. I feel like I've been 34 for about 34 years. <laughs> but thank you very much. Yeah. And so we, because it was your birthday, mm-hmm. um, we, uh, you really picked this movie. Yeah. And which I, I, I don't mean to suggest for a second that I would not have enjoyed doing this movie regardless, because I think Happy Death Day, which is the movie we're talking about, is terrific. I think it's a wonderful <laughs> it's so movie. Fun. Yeah. But in addition to that, the, you know, as always on this show, we like to kind of draw out a little bit of a, a relationship topic. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the one that you brought to the table alongside this movie, because this is uh, like, this is my favorite kind of episode where I have almost no responsibility to come up with any part of it. <laughs> And, and so you said, hey, let's do Happy Death Day and we'll talk about One Night Stands. And I was like, that's a great idea. And even better because I didn't have to think of it. Which naturally, in fairness, makes it a little bit better already. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I yeah, I just, um, yeah, it just it had like a birthday theme and it has like romance elements in varying degrees and uh and it's like a quirky little fun horror comedy and um i just thought it it fit well and uh yeah and it's uh written and directed by a guy named chris landon who has done um you know these happy death day movies uh he did a scout's guide to the zombie apocalypse which is a movie uh I, i i find quite entertaining yeah, we covered that in in my other show, um, <clears throat> Eternal Darkness of Not So Spotless Minds. Check it out. Uh, <laughs> Edenism. Shameless plug. Edenism, yeah. Um, yeah, we, I, I, I liked that movie. I didn't love it. I had I had issues, some issues with it, but like it was fun for the yeah, most part. But it has a stretchy zombie penis and. <laughs> oh fuck yeah! I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah, it does that. It does that. All is forgiven. All is forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> but no this feels great like yeah yeah th- there's a reevaluation coming for scout's guy just based on zombie penis <laughs> just alone. based on zombie penis yeah 100 <laughs> uh and then he went on to do freaky which i like but i feel like freaky is just sort of happy death day in a slightly different environment like i, I know it's freaky it yeah it's it totally fine it's got really good moments it, it, it is a a totally fine movie I just wish that Chris Landon would get away from the formula of what if a slasher movie had a baby with this, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. with, in this case, it's like, what if a slasher movie had a baby with groundhog day and, uh-huh. and freaky is what if a slasher movie had a baby with freaky Friday? Yeah. And, yeah. And it works and it's fun, but also I just want him to do something that isn't a hybrid kind of movie like that. I, you know, yeah yeah well i kind of i just found like for example i found like um scout's guide to just kind of be a a poor man zombie land yeah you know? I, like i just it wasn't exactly the, it wasn't exactly the same obviously but like it just had it it brushed those same strokes and i just found it kind of a bit lacking i could be honest it's been about a year or something since i've seen it well no that's that's a lie but about eight months since i've seen it um so I can't remember everything and I only saw it the once, but like, I just remember thinking, eh, it's all right. <laughs> no, it never really got beyond that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that I disagree with that, but I think it's just so good natured that it is good natured. I, I kind of like that. It's just got like, I I'm a sucker for a movie that's, you know, kind of baked in is just a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of heart. You're a softie. Uh, I am. I am. I'm a softie. Um, yeah. We all knows it. Yeah. I Look, 
I, I can't get away from it. I I think I, I've said this before. I think it's a factor of age. I think as you get older, you just get more <laughs> sentimental. Um, uh, but you know, I, I don't That's deny right. it. Uh, I want to I want to watch Freaky though because it's got uh, the the main chick in it is in Supernatural, um, and although her character is the most annoying character in Supernatural, um, I still have to go and watch it to support my uh, SPN family hashtag. Who, <laughs> who was she in Supernatural? She plays Claire, um, Jimmy Novak's daughter, and Jimmy Novak is the human that Castiel uses as a vessel. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if I got to that. <gasps> Oh my god! How far did you get? You must not got to. Oh, in like have, seven, well, eight seasons, but yeah, that that sounds right. Actually, yeah. <laughs> and so. I think she came in like season six. I'm pretty uh, sure. I don't. Yeah, mm, I don't remember. Yeah, something. I can't remember seasons like six through to like eleven all kind of merge for me because I watched them all very close together. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, so I'm not one hundred percent sure. I need to go back and rewatch it. I still haven't seen season fifteen, and I really, I'm hold, I'm holding off because I'm just not ready for that show to be over in my life. I'm just not ready for it. it but I blows, need to because I can't, I can't stay off the internet for that long. <laughs> it's spoilerific everywhere. It blows my mind that there were fifteen seasons of Supernatural, and I, that, that's not. I'm not throwing shade at Supernatural at all. Like I've enjoyed a lot of Supernatural, I, like you said, around that like six, seven season. Uh, or so I was like I I think I'm good I think I'm gonna tap out here a lot of people did but I would I would say it's worth getting back into it just got a little repetitive for a while of like oh this brother goes to hell and then there's a whole season about getting him out (laughs) oh the next season the other one ends up in hell and there's a whole thing about getting him out and I was like you know I get (laughs) it yeah 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 yeah. hell is starting to seem porous (laughs) <laughs> they have a thing though later on where like um death basically says like you're out your nine lives <laughs> you can't we're not let we that's it you're done you can't do this anymore kind of thing like once you're dead you're dead um because i think that was like a, a criticism that they got a lot on for me supernatural is comfort food mm-hmm. like i just shove it on and i watch my boys and do their thing and we have some rock music and we drink some beers and like it's so yeah, I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, and uh, J- <laughs> Jansen, Jensen Eccles. Yeah, Jansen Eccles, Eccles, Jensen, and, Jensen Eccles. <laughs> yeah, he I think is a, an incredibly charming actor, and not that Jared Padalecki is not, but he in particular is uh, very fun on that show, and you know, yeah, he has a good time Sammy. with that. I think. Sammy, oh, do you know that because they are. Okay, I swear to God, I will shut up about Supernatural in a sec. But, um, like, in uh, in real life, obviously, I'd say, obviously, I'd, in case people don't know, they are extremely close. Like, they're godfather to each other's kids. They moved back to Texas. Um, even though they shot a lot of it in Canada, they both moved back to Texas so that they would be near each other and their families would grow up together. And um, in real life, like, if uh, Jared Padalecki would have a nightmare or something, because he deals with a lot of anxiety and depression and stuff, which he's very open about. And um, he... Uh, he would often yell out Dean in his sleep. Oh, wow. Yeah, because they just do that show all the time. They live those characters. Yeah. And, like, apparently they were they went somewhere doing, like, a Comic-Con somewhere or other, and they were, like, walking through this alleyway together um, after, like, getting some food or something or other. And I think, shit, what was the story? Like, I think someone, like, called out Sam and Dean just, like, on instinct instead of jensen and jared it was like hey sam and dean you know like a fan mm-hmm. um and they both just turned instinctively and just went what like they just... um yeah it's crazy i do like uh periodically just saying come on sammy sammy come on sammy sammy, uh, yeah. sammy! <laughs> dean <laughs> it's great uh if i have a cat talk... i'm gonna call him sam and dean <laughs> that's not bad it's not bad. No. Uh, there Sorry, a, yeah, we're not here to talk about Supernatural. <laughs> we're yeah, here to talk I, about Happy Death Day. I feel like there was a, a 50s group called Sam and Dean. Oh, yeah. Um, no, Sam and Dave. That's right, Sam and Dave. You're right. Sam and Dave, yeah. Yeah, and um, that was what, Land they're... of a Thousand Dances? Was that their big thing? <sighs> I don't know. I, don't, I know, like, the my favorite song of theirs is Hold On, I'm Coming. 
Oh, uh, yeah, that right, right, right. right, right. Da, 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 da. Oh, such a fucking good song. Yeah, oh, my is. God. Yeah, it's a, a bit of a banger. That's my happy song. That, like, if I'm in a bad mood, I'll put that on and it just, like, yeah. Um, gets me back. Anyway. Yeah. My, mine is uh, Mozart's Requiem. Oh. Always cheers me up. This. <laughs> it cheers you up. No, no. I mean, I love it, but, like, it's fucking intense. It's dark, yeah. <laughs> He just casting out some hellfire just to perk you up. <laughs> I just, yeah, I, I I just watched that last scene from Amadeus, right. where he's dying in the requiem of his plane. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel when you said uh, I every time I hear requiem, I think Faro's requiem. So I was like, oh, oh wait, no, that's oh that. Oh, okay, it took me a second. It took me a second. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're uh, as we mentioned earlier. <laughs> We were talking about uh, uh, Happy Death Day, and um, before we get into that, because we're also discussing One Night Stands, yeah. then I'll, I'll start us off, because you're going to have way better stories about this, because <laughs> in, in the scope of my life, I think there have been like two, maybe three One Night Stands. And that I've, I've been a part of, not that I've heard about it, there have been more than that. Uh, just in the world. <laughs> in the world. But, but I've only really had like three. Like there was a couple in college. And then the weirdest one. At like, And this is. I don't know if, if it's a point of shame. Or if it's just why, like. Well this is just shit that happens. But I could not begin to tell you the name of this girl. Oh my god. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> like literally don't even worry about it. I used to have a list. Of my. Of my list shall we say uh -huh. um so i wouldn't forget the names and then an ex of mine got really like shitty that i would carry it around with me it's not like i brought it out and looked at it every day for nostalgia reasons or anything but i just i kept it in my purse so i wouldn't lose it so that i wouldn't be one of these people who just had slept with so many people that they forgot who they'd slept with and not that i've slept with like hundreds or anything can i just make that clear but like and no shame if you have but like um you know i was just kind of like i don't i don't kind of want to remember who i've who i've you know boinked um, mm -hmm. and um the anyway term, of course <laughs> of course um but he got really jealous and he made me throw it out and now i can't remember fucking any of them and me and my best friend like last year at some point tried to go through and see if we could like, like go through my my timeline of events and just like see if we could remember and the best we could do is like the guy who or that guy where or <laughs> when we met <laughs> and that was like the bad and even then we couldn't even remember them all and I'm pretty sure that my list, original list might have even not been complete because there have been a couple that have popped up in my memory every now and then I'm like huh was that my original list so yeah don't even worry about it it's fine like yeah, yeah th <laughs> this was like a friend of a friend who was cruising through town kind of thing nice and yeah it was it was completely like no strings attached in in the best possible way it's the best when you both go in knowing like that's what it is because half of my more than half of one night, st night stands i didn't realize were one night stands until later oh really well, I was very young and, and stupid. <laughs> I was naive doesn't even cover it. I was just flat out stupid. Um, because like all of my relationships, I say all of my relationships at the ripe old age of 19, mm -hmm. um, like the two, two or three people <laughs> After that I had. a couple of marriages. And... <laughs> yeah, you know, a couple of kids through down and stuff. Oh, here's the way the world works. Yeah. Um, yeah, no. Uh, I, I, I had like three what i would call proper boyfriends um but each of them i'd slept with right away um and so i just figured that's how you did it mm -hmm. you just sleep with the guy and then hey you, you were dating and you know he was he was your boyfriend <laughs> and it didn't like i didn't really get why that wasn't a thing all of a sudden it's like because kate you're not 15 anymore or you're not 16 anymore you're not 17 anymore you are now 19 and 20 <laughs> you know, like, it's that's just how that works and it took me um it took me, it took me a while to figure that out <laughs> um so i have a fair few one night stand stories not all of them are entertaining but some of them are and you'll hear about them later i'm sure yeah the 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 one and this is far and away like the purest one night stand story that i have which is this now nameless uh young woman i well i don't know 
I'm trying to think. I was probably late twenties at the time. Uh huh. And I'll tell you what it taught me, though, Kate. Since we, mm-hmm. you know, this Go is the the oversharing show. I love it. Um, is that she had real thick thighs? And oh that, yeah, that was she not a, a girl. Yeah, love it. that was not a thing I realized I liked until I I got me a little nip of that, and <laughs> and realized like, oh, this is like. There, there is like she wasn't. She wasn't even chubby. That's not even the right word for it. She was just kind of, you know, thick, yeah. I, as the kids say, with the two C's. <laughs> with the two C's, yeah. And yeah, but it, it was like the first time that I I'd, I'd gone uh, that route in life, and I was like, oh yeah, I totally see the appeal here. This is this is fantastic. Uh, she is a. She is curvy in all the right places. Um, oh, she a powerhouse. She was, yeah, yeah. And uh-huh. she was she was like five ten as well. Oh wow. Yeah, okay. Which was great oh, yeah. because I'm, you know, I'm like six two. Nice. And yeah. And it was it was that that was rowdy. You could you could have sex standing up, not just lying down. <laughs> right, yeah. It's not uh-huh. like you just get on top and I'll let you know when Thing, things are really <laughs> about to explode. Um, no, it was like, and that was, again, one of one of the, I think maybe as, uh, it, as a function of it being a one night stand, both of us kind of knowing like she wasn't really going to be in town and that kind of thing, that it, uh-huh. it was just a, like a throwdown fuck. Yeah. And, and it was nice. a great time, you know. Like was... my best one night stand ever was my last one night stand and uh which i hasten to add was eight years ago <laughs> oh in fact fuck it could even be to the day um oh well even... happy anniversary yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> um my... no i'm not i'm not gonna check him out later at all <laughs> i'm engaged <laughs> and not to him um but like yeah i met him just before i, I met my partner um but uh yeah anyway he was like my best one night stand and that was i put down purely because well, a he was he was also thick, but not in the leg in his third leg department. But also um, the fact that we both knew what it was, and we did the whole date. Like we had a whole date. It was a Tinder thing, and we like we had been like chatting and bouncing for like weeks, and we just had like a really good rapport. And then so when we met, it was like really easy, and we went for some food, and we went to this really cool like. A jazz cocktail bar where it was like um, they had like this electro swing band playing and we just got really drunk and danced and like properly danced it wasn't even just like on that spot like he was twirling me around and shit because that's what the music evoked and then we went to this divey little bar and we stayed up until like 1am chatting about real fucking shit because we knew we were not going to see each other again and then we danced back to his apartment which was about a 10 minute walk away and we danced through the street lights through this little park and to no music and it was just the most like it was okay to be like that because we both knew that it wasn't actually really like that and then we just didn't sleep all night and it was fucking fantastic um and i i i th- this is what kind of annoys me about like all the people beforehand who kind of led me on to believe that something was going to be more than it was by throwing me all these lines and naive 19 me was like lapping it up going oh my god like he wants to see what my smile looks like in the morning I'm like yeah he does um well right right <laughs> and, right sure. <laughs> you know but I was just you know and and like if you had just fucking told me that this is what it is then like well you know I might have let my freak flag fly a little bit earlier on if I knew that this was going to be like the one thing like you know, and shit, and, like, I would have just, you know, like, it would have been a very different, like, experience, I think, because if you know that that's it, and that's just, you don't have to be inhibited, you don't have to worry about, like, oh, am I giving the wrong signals, am I doing, you know, whatever, you can just kind of go in and just have fun and do what you, do exactly what you want. Yeah, yeah, and I, right, I think that was kind of, I mean, (laughs) there were no dancing through the street lamps <laughs> with uh my special thick lady but <laughs> but it was yeah i mean it was very much the like hey neither of us have to pretend about anything we are not yeah they, you know th- this is all going to be simply what it is and yeah. and it's it like a one night stand gets much maligned in popular culture i think 
uh, because there there's the implication, or maybe it's just this is the past uh, and it's not so much this way anymore. But there was the implication of like, oh, this is like either somebody got duped into this and that's why it's a one night stand. Like the whole walk of shame idea of yeah, like, yeah. oh, you know, you end up having this fling. It was totally meaningless. And then, you know, the, the, the woman and or man just gets chewed up and spit out the other side of it. Yeah. I hate that term walk of shame like yeah. why i just got laid you didn't <laughs> right well yeah and it, but, it, i mean yeah and also, me did, but... you know, just as we were talking about though i don't think that it's meaningless like it doesn't have to mean everything for it to mean something you know yeah 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 definitely like i i know you know what I, I would say that a lot of it i mean at least in my experience like i always learned something i might have learned it too late but like <laughs> um i learned something from my one night stands and like at the time it's just fun and like you know even if it's just honing your skills like <laughs> you know just like just, just practice with a friend yeah just, exactly just practicing until you get to the main event it's like um, yeah, I just, I don't feel like there's any, there is any shame to be had from a one night stand. It might not be for everyone. Like I, I know plenty of people who just, who are, you know, serial monogamous and they, they are serial, well, not serial, uh, serial long-term days, but like, you know, they, they, they can't do a one night stand thing because it's just not in their nature to be that way with someone who they don't know. Um, you know, or they only find people like I've got a couple of friends who, um only find people attractive once they've gotten to know them um you know so uh you know there's there's that side of it as well but for those who like are quite able to have one night stands and quite willing to have one night stands there's no fucking shame in it whatsoever just like you kind of like the the piece of the piece of advice that i hear most, most often from like the older generation is just like fuck all the time just yeah. fuck as much as you can that's the the because, little Miss Sunshine philosophy that uh, Alan Arkin has in that movie. It's not that. Right, yes, yeah, when he's yes. like, just fuck everybody you can. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I forgot he said that to uh, to fucking Paul Dano's character. Didn't yeah, it? the kid. Yeah, yeah little yeah. kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you great. know what the secret of life is, kid? Fuck it. You fuck everybody you possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, and uh, I'll, all right. I'll tell you what. Let's circle back to that. And get get a little bit into this movie here. Um, yes. So it starts off with the one night stand, or with the the back end of a presumed one night stand. Yes, is, is sort of the thing. Is uh, tree, which by the way, the first time I saw this movie, for <laughs> half the movie I was like, "What is her name again?" <laughs> yes, the dumbest fucking name. And it, it's short for Teresa, but yeah, tree. Uh, who is played by Jessica <laughs> Roth, and she's fantastic. She is so oh, good in this she's movie. delightful, isn't she? <laughs> and just love her. She she wakes up on her birthday as as we were joking earlier. Like the phone goes off and he's like, hey, yeah. it's, hey your birthday. it's my birthday, and now you gotta pick up the phone. <laughs> and <laughs> so annoyingly catchy. <laughs> she she wakes up, and there is this guy named Carter, uh, as played by Israel Broussard, who is also really charming in this movie. I love him too. Love him. He gives me Adrian very not Adrian Adam Brody. Ugh, fucking <sighs> Adam Brody. Who's the guy out of fucking Ready or Not and shit? And... Uh, the... It's Adam Brody. Isn't I it? think that's right. I'll, I'll we'll uh, double check that. Yeah. Anyway, him. He gives me him vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Him vibes. You know I mean? <laughs> I'm sorry, I made this point with well, I've not got all the facts, but you know who I mean? And like he gives me vibes of him. Yeah, Adam Brody is the guy's name. It is Adam Brody. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, it gives he gives me vibes of him. And so he wakes up and uh, or she wakes up and there he is and she's like, Oh shit, I just fucked yeah. this guy. <laughs> I, uh -huh. I don't remember to. it. <laughs> yeah, he's he's kind of a nerd. This is definitely not great. Um, and you know, she's asking for Tylenol. Um, <laughs> importantly, ignoring the a phone call coming in uh, from her father. Yes. And she ends up uh, basically grabbing her clothes and kind of bouncing as quickly as she can. 
Yeah. Uh, because again, she's very embarrassed by this, knows that she's got to, you know, run in behind, hungover. There is nothing worse than waking up hungover in a place that you do not immediately recognize. Oh, God, yeah, no. Yeah, it's awful. And then also just like, oh, shit, how the fuck have I got to get home? And I mean, luckily it's on campus. Like, they all live on campus, so it's not, like, too, too bad. But, like, yeah, it's just, ah, uh, shit. And especially when you've got things to do that day and you're, like, behind. Like, I'm the kind of person, like, if I oversleep or something, and I have to be somewhere or whatever, I get so flustered. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's my day just, like, ugh. Like, I'm on edge the whole day. Yeah, I, I'm almost ready to call the whole day at that point. I was just like, yes. I, let me just start. Let me, we'll, we're going to erase this one off the calendar, and we're just going to try this all again tomorrow. Well, I mean, funny you should say that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's You're... what happens. <laughs> it's literally yeah. what happens. I, you know, I'm a big believer in that. Like, some days, uh, you know, like, there is this push-pull for me of, like, you want to make every day count, you know? Like, you, know, you ought to do something uh, every day that is productive or you're learning something or whatever. But there are yeah. some days that you just have to allow are just garbage and you just <laughs> have to write them off. Yeah. Uh, Especially if you wake up with a fuck off hangover. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes just like some life will, you know, throw you that curveball where you're just like, Oh, all right, well that's just what I'm dealing with today. I'm going to deal with this and, figure out how to you know piece shit back together and then we're gonna regroup tomorrow and try uh to live yeah. a life um, yeah but yeah so tree not having a great start to the day there's uh the the roommate of uh of carter uh, a guy named ryan who as soon as she opens the door he's like hey what about that fine vagina i and know <laughs> so cringe it's, it's such a like i'm not i'm not a guy um newsflash mm -hmm. but um like it's just to me it's just that such typical kind of like lad bro type like thing to say you know just like hey up high kind of thing like you got your dick wet sort of thing like it's just like it just makes me laugh because it's just so typically that to me Right. But it's quite funny, though, because these guys are so not that type of guy. And especially as, like, it unfolds and we get to know Carter more. And then in the second one, we get to know Ryan more. Like, they're not those types of guys. But for him to come out with something like that is just like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, the, the thing that's ridiculous about it, too, is that, especially in college, getting laid is shockingly easy. You know, it depends on your, yeah. it depends on circumstances and standards and all that stuff. I mean, I understand that. But if your goal is just to get laid and that is the only guideline that you're following, you can get laid. And, uh, yeah. And that's true of anybody at almost any time, you know, yeah. like, you know, it is not that hard, especially in this day of technology and wonder, you oh, can find like... somebody to fuck if you really want to. Yeah, I didn't even go to university, but I would go along with my friends to their university nights. Easy as shit to get laid. You don't even have to go to the university. Yeah. In fact, it's easier probably if you don't. <laughs> right. And, you know, you can you can make the argument like, well, I, I, was, I was a nerd. I was fat. Whatever it is, there is the female equivalent of you somewhere out there that you can fuck. Yeah. If your standards are... Uh, you know you don't have to aim very high right exactly you just have to be <laughs> you have to be realistic at times <laughs> if, if i mean if you're looking for a fling like you, you know anybody can woo somebody over time like that's a, yeah. a whole different animal but if you're looking yeah. for the one night stand and that's mm -hmm. purely a physical thing mm -hmm. you know just just make sure that you have tuned the frequency right yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, whatever you're out for, a D or a V, there is one for you. Yes, 100%. So, mm -hmm. and like I said, that holds true. That's what I always say. <laughs> a, D, a D or a V, whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> that is going to be the official merchandise of this show. 
<laughs> have on t-shirts. Uh-huh. D <laughs> on TM, the TM. front, V on the back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, but, so Tree ends up uh, like putting on her clothes, running out past Ryan, goes across campus, and we get a bunch of little things like uh, you know a, a fraternity guy falling over, sprinklers coming on, car horn the going off, climate change girl, bless her, trying so hard. Right, is all these little things that will matter later as you see them yeah. repeated. And- and she comes across the guy who she's had a, had a date with. Uh, what's he called? Tim, uh, called yeah. Uh, Tim. And um, and I like, because this comes back later. Um, but there's this line where it's just, because we have to, at this point, we're establishing who she is. And basically who she is, is a stuck up prima donna bitch. Yeah, she's and a terrible person when this was She's a re- not a, not a good person at all. And she's just treats everyone with scorn and disdain. And, um, you know, he's like, hey, so we went on a, she's like, we went on a date. Like, what do you want from me? Like, he's like, you've not been texting me. And he's, she goes, who takes their first date to Subway? It's not like you have a foot long. And just, Ouch. You know, like, it's so unnecessarily cruel. And I feel as well, like, I mean, I'd, again, I'm not a guy to know for sure, but I feel like teenage guys or like young adult guys are very sensitive about their junk and their size and their manhood um and you know partly because i feel like they haven't you know necessarily fine-tuned the other aspects of the car to go you know they don't you know it's all about the uh maybe not the accelerator but you know, it's like um it's you know i don't know what analogy i'm doing it's very late and i'm not very well but um but you know it's like i feel like you know to go for for that is is unnecessarily cruel <laughs> right yeah, it's yeah. it's definitely hitting him where it hurts. Yeah, yeah, and, for sure. And but we'll also, as you know, as the movie goes on, you kind of learn. Well, you know, Tim's basically looking for a beard anyway, and um, but yeah. Anyway, no. so so when she she gets in to the sorority house, uh, there is the head sister Danielle who stops her and is like, you know, well, 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 look who's come walking in. Um, yeah and gives her some shit about a meeting that they've got later yeah uh, then there's the roommate uh lori yeah. lori yeah who keeps trying to give her a cupcake <laughs> yeah which is like it's very sweet it's this little lone cupcake with like a little you know candle on it but yeah that does come back but like there's um yeah we we do get like a little bit of again of who uh of who tree is uh because laurie because she says oh please don't tell me i did anything embarrassing last night and then laurie turns around she's like unless you count dancing on the bar starting two fights and buffing pretzel chunks all over the bar embarrassing and then it also turns out that she <laughs> uh and i quote also rammed your tongue down nick sims throat right in front of danielle so presumably nick sims is danielle's guy or at least someone who she fancies um and uh but it turns out both of them are so drunk that they can't neither of them can remember it um but it's just again it's just sort of like a little show like of who tree is and and like how she behaves and we kind of see a bit of this behavior later on where she completely disregards danielle i mean danielle's a cunt but like you know they are kind of frenemies anyway you know it's probably the best term for it um and there is kind of like a sisterhood like allegiance within s- sororities as i'm led to believe from american tv um and so because uh, we don't really have that here um you know so i do I, I do understand that even though danielle is like a bit of a dick like it's still something that you still shouldn't be doing if you're in like a sorority together and you know that she likes someone or something is that am i right yeah well i think just basic human decency I mean, yeah, but like also, <laughs> but also though, like, because they're not exactly friends, though, are they? So no, but I mean, even if it's not a friend, I think eh, I'm, I'm again. The, this is something that I think you just own a little bit of, like, hey, if you guys aren't together, or if you are together and Nick is into me, then that means you guys aren't as together as you think you are. But neither one of them are talking about it, I think, is the thing. is like there's yeah. this unspoken rivalry 
but but it I get I don't think it's ever very clear in the movie if Nick is totally Daniel's boyfriend or not. Well, because like, because is is this the guy who they see at the party later that night? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because the way that Danielle is with him, it suggests that they're not together. Because she's trying way hard, mm-hmm. and Nick is just kind of disregarding her, and is very clearly into Tree, and you know, so it suggests to me that they're not together. And um, well, I mean, I don't want to say that I've done that, but I've definitely done that. Where, like, I had, like, a bit of a frenemy and at a party I just hooked up with the guy she'd liked for a while. But, like, also, though, so had every one of our friends and it was just kind of funny that she was the only one he didn't get to. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's not fu- it's not funny. Well, um, it, it's funny if it's, it's everybody but her. I mean, That's it's, where it circles around. It wasn't all in that one night. It wasn't like we all just had a go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was... Uh... <laughs> I don't, I don't think the guy would be <laughs> we capable We made her of watch. It. Yeah. Here, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Let's go to the video. <laughs> um, but yeah, it wasn't like the best idea though because we were making those. Do you, do, you make, do you have Nesquik in America? Nesquik? Like the drink. Yeah, like, like chocolate a, milk. The, like the chocolate milk. Yeah, drink. Yeah, yeah. So we would, make, we would make vodka versions of those. So it's just like vodka, chocolate, vodka milk uh-huh. thing. Um, but as you can imagine with the milk and the vodka and the chocolate, if you, know, you had enough of those and there was enough... <clears throat> motion going on sure. um that that would make for a, a a sickly good time shall we say yeah um so i ended up having to stop halfway through to go vomit um <laughs> but um but yeah i <laughs> but i remember going to the bathroom because we'd gone into a room i can't even remember it's this house pie and i remember just my friends <laughs> I remember on the way back when I wasn't dashing, just my friends like hurrying her out of the room oh, so rough. that I could make my way back <laughs> to continue shagging this guy. <laughs> and I just being very grateful for that. Also, um, not so grateful for the fact that no one had gum. Um, but I don't think he uh, cared. Ugh, that is rough. Yeah, I know. I was not classy. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. This show is really gonna like air on my laundry. I was not classy at all, like remotely. Let's just get that out of the way. Like I'm not. I'm. <laughs> I'm not gonna come off well in this show. <laughs> like, um, but I did find it funny that literally every one of our friends shagged him apart from her. <laughs> wow. But she was a cow. She was a cow though. Like she wasn't. I wouldn't have done it if she was nice. So mm, you're like, not. right? Not not a cow in terms of being overweight oh no no sorry a cow in england just means that you're like uh oh god no jesus that's harsh no i wouldn't oh no sorry if that came out like that no i didn't mean it like that no i meant like she's um no she was just not a nice person a cow is like someone who's just not a nice person yeah like she was real snotty and very she was kind of like a danielle actually if i'm honest so yeah all right well um yeah so uh anyway (laughs) so laurie after trying to give her the cupcake in case we we skipped over this because i forgot oh yeah sorry but there was the whole thing where tree is like sorry too many carbs and she dumps the cupcake uh, which is a real bitch move as well so dickish isn't it and so tree then scampers off to class where we see her kind of making eyes with the the professor uh-huh. And it we don't get the payoff of that right away, but it's certainly like, oh, there is definitely something up between these two. I've got a line going, oop, they fucking. Sure. Yes. They are certainly fucking. And uh, yeah. then there's the meeting, or the first time we see the meeting with all the sorority sisters, where they're talking about some sp- spring dance that uh, is coming up. And there's a sorority sister named Becky who has this plate of food or tray of food w- with including some chocolate milk. Uh, speaking of some Nesquik. Oh my God. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I didn't even get that link. And, uh, and she's like, what is that? And, yeah. um, you know, Becky is like, oh, well, I, I miss breakfast. And in one of my favorite lines, Danielle says, we all miss breakfast. Miss Becky. What is breakfast, Becky? Yeah. <laughs> it's just... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, like... Oh, she's such a cow. And then, like... Because at first we have... Because obviously we see this scene play out a fair few times. And 
um yeah like uh tree is giving her shit as well and because it turns out this sorority has a strict diet that they all must adhere to mm-hmm. and that includes no breakfast yep and <sighs> becky gets up to throw the food away under danielle's command essentially <sighs> and then runs into carter who has shown up to give tree back a bracelet that was left behind and when this happens uh, tree immediately pulls him aside he's like what are you doing you do not give th- this back to me in front of these women because they will tear yeah. me apart yeah because you are way beneath the the kind of men that i should be sleeping with according to the rules of this sorority <laughs> and don't tell yeah. anybody that i woke up in your bedroom and that we we slept together yeah and um, poor guy said, yeah because he's just like the nicest guy um and yeah and she's just such a cow but like but then like we realize i think like later that obviously there is such pressure from this sorority and to like fit in and there's all these underlying things going on with her too um but like yeah i just i'm sorry but like no one takes away my fucking breakfast and no one makes me throw away fries like no sororities worth that i'm sorry yeah yeah. yeah well, Especially not my chocolate milk, damn it. <laughs> yeah, you have the vodka and Nesquik. Yeah. I'll get through my day. The magic elixir. Uh, <laughs> so she ends up, uh, Tree ends up leaving to go to the university hospital where she sees Lori there for a second and dodges another phone call from her dad and then ends up in the office of her professor slash doctor at this hospital yeah and then we see him make out a little bit we realize like oh she is fucking her professor who also happens to be a married man yeah can we just like the kick that she does with the chair to slam it into the door to stop it from opening that Mm -hmm. is masterful like that's not her first time no it, it is the practiced move of someone who is uh up to no good yeah yeah and it's impressive though i couldn't help but just be impressed by that the worst part of this though is when the wife shows up <sighs> oh, yeah. and tree does that like oh it's nice to meet you and kind of you know head down books out of the room oh le- yeah leaving behind the you know greg is the professor's name to look at his mm-hmm. wife and be like hey that's just a student of mine no big deal you're he like, introduces her hey have you met my student teresa yeah ah it's real garbage it's such garbage yeah and uh, greg was actually the first name my first proper boyfriend oh well yeah. was he also a uh college professor who was no but he was older than me he oh. was uh, oh. unsuitably older for me like i was 15 he was 21 oh that is unsuitable <laughs> Yeah, but I can. <laughs> I told you I'm not going to come off well. Fuck. Why did I choose this film? Um, but like, <laughs> I can say, I can genuinely say, genuinely say, like, you know, nearly. Oh God, nearly twenty years on. Oh, that just sunk in. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> shut up. Time keeps on slipping, um, slipping, slipping into the future. <laughs> it really does. Um, God, that song is so dark now. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I hear the glee in your voice. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm like the, the ghost of Christmas future. <laughs> just be like, yes, yes, Kate. <laughs> I can basically hear you rubbing your hands together. That's a fucking fireplace in the background and everything. Uh, um, snifter of brandy. <laughs> yes, well, yeah. welcome to the old folks home, Kate. <laughs> you are always here. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I can say with like, I can genuinely say he w- he wasn't a creep. He just he just wasn't very good looking. <laughs> and I, when I met him, I told him I was a lot older. I told him I was eighteen. Um, so it, it kind of wasn't his fault. I was okay. I was that kid. Yes, for sure. Like that is less his fault if he thinks that you're a, a grown adult. Yes, or at least it was, an and then. Yeah, and then I found out. I don't, then no, so then I told him rather. Um, I always knew how old I was. Uh, I told him how old I actually was, but like after, <clears throat> yeah, I'm really not coming off very well. No, I don't think I had slept together, but I know that we were like, he, we'd like gone out a little bit and stuff. Um, 
but yeah so it, I'm going to stop talking because I'm really not coming off well here. Minnie tried to dumb. break Did up with me I and I dumb? faked a pregnancy. <laughs> no, but I dumped him for the guy who, um, in previous episodes that I've explained, <laughs> I dumped him for the guy whose girlfriend was a lesbian and in love with me. <laughs> do you remember that story? Yeah, I do when remember the... that story, of course. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my teenage years are a fucking drama, honestly. It sounds pretty, <laughs> pretty exciting. Um, it's fucking traumatic but yeah okay let's go with exciting so danielle then uh is inviting tree to this party that's taking place later that night at the dorm and so she heads uh across campus um by herself and it's uh there's a game that night or something and the 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 school mascot is the babies yeah, that is a weird fucking mascot. Yeah. Like, that's so fucking weird. I don't know much about, like, college mascots, but that... Like, fill me in. That is weird, right? Yeah, Back no, that is though. uncommon. There is... That, uh-huh, that's like, okay. you know, being the fighting insurance salesman or something. It's just... <laughs> nobody really has... that. that like... One, it's not very threatening. There is nothing <laughs> threatening baby. about a baby. <laughs> that baby, however, though. That's fucking terrifying, that baby. But. Yeah. Yeah, and but yeah, but generally speaking, in the world, yeah, babies are pretty non-threatening. Right. Uh, look, I am not a great fighter, but I'll take on an infant <laughs> any day of the week. It drop kick Gage out of fucking. <laughs> oh yeah, like... <laughs> that's one of my biggest problems with Pet Cemetery. <laughs> is like when that little kid shows up, you're like, well, even if he's got a knife, it's still just a baby. <laughs> It's not even a knife, it's a fucking scalpel. It's like a baby knife for a baby. Right. Hey, baby, with your baby knife. <laughs> hey, stupid baby. <laughs> stupid baby. Uh, drop kick that shit. I kind of have the same problem with, like, uh, dolls. Chucky. Yeah, dolls that come to <laughs> life. I'm like, you're. It, it's like a baby, only not even a person. Yeah, I think with, with Chucky, though, am I, am, I, am I wrong in thinking this? But doesn't he have the strength of a full-grown man? Like, it kind of, it's a, like, his, like, his deal is that, he still has the strength of fucking. He's like an dolph. ant. He's like yeah, proportional I, like strength. Yeah, uh, I, like I'm that. not sure something, about something. that. But... I'm pretty sure I remember that. I can't remember. It's been so long since I've watched that film actually. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm pretty sure with that. So that. But also, I would say with Pet Cemetery, like you're not going to drop kid your kid, drop kick your kid, are you? Like there's that emotional blackmail going on. Yeah. Well, sure. I mean, the parents aren't. I mean, but, Judd has no excuse. Right. Judd should be, like, putting a trash can on that kid and putting a yeah. heavy rock on it and you're done. <laughs> like a fucking house spider. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, nope, and you're out. I have a timeout. I have a fucking timeout. Yeah. You think about what you did. <laughs> yeah. And you are done. <laughs> um... <laughs> Well, we're talking about mascots. Fuck, yeah, this mascot. Oh, yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so there are these people dressed up like babies running around all over campus. <laughs> just its own kink. And she gets uh, another call from her dad, like a voicemail from her dad. Uh, and he's like, Tree, I can't I believe you would dad. do this to me today of all days. And uh, and we'll, you know, circle we'll back get to, to that. that. Yeah. Oh, her poor dad, though. That's such a dick move. Oh, it it really is. It's it's a real jerk thing to do. So then she hears this music box going oh, off horrible. in the middle of this tunnel, this like absentia tunnel. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! If it is, isn't it just Jesus? And she goes to pick it up, and then there's somebody standing at the end of the tunnel wearing one of these baby masks. And she says, like, you better get out of here. I'm going to call the cops. But eventually she just gets chased by this dude. Yeah. uh, Who's got a a big wicked knife. And the the person in the baby mask catches up to her, stabs her. And then suddenly she wakes up in Carter's room with the phone, you know, doing the, hey, it's your birthday. Hey, it's your birthday. Um, I would just I would argue though that that first girl is is 100% her fault because first off who goes down that creepy fucking tunnel on your own and then secondly who the fuck goes up to that fucking creepy ass music box like what are you doing what are you doing have you never seen anything ever in your life ever no you fucking hightail it the other way what the fuck so that one that one's purely on her (laughs) totally her fault 
It's uh, totally her. I will victim blame that shit. <laughs> you heard. <laughs> so uh, she is really freaked out when she wakes up and all the same stuff is happening again. Um, and we kind of see an abbreviated version of that first sequence where yeah. she wakes up. Um, she doesn't really get you know, into too much of what's going on with Carter just is in a, in a hurry. And by the time she's going across campus and seeing all this stuff repeat, you know, she's kind of chalking it up to like deja vu. Yeah. Yeah. She sort of says it's deja vu or even just like, she's dreamt it or something like it's a dream or like the, the previous day had been like a dream or something like, which I think your rational mind would try to box it like that. Mm Mm-hmm um it's like the the third time or like the next time it happens like the third time we see it um that's when she's like oh no this is something's fucked here but yeah this time she's freaked out but she's not like lost her mind yet right and she does things slightly different like with the the cupcake she doesn't throw it away she just puts it on like the nightstand by her bed yeah um when there's the meeting at lunch uh tree tells becky when she's getting up with the tray she's like oh watch out but it you know it still happens anyway where she runs into into uh, car Carter. yeah chocolate milk goes over over tree's head <laughs> oh yeah and then uh when she goes to the party though she wisely avoids the bridge this time yes well done well done and she gets to the dorm and there's somebody with a baby mask on which freaks her out and then she punches the, the guy in the face yes so great it, it, which turns out to be this guy nick that danielle is into yeah and so she ends up you know in typical tree fashion as we've come to understand it uh partying it, it turns out it's like a surprise birthday party for her. <laughs> it's such an august surprise oh what did he do (laughs) and right and she just gets loaded again she ends up sneaking off to nick's room oh welcome to the pleasure dome (laughs) oh man oh my lord i just how 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 does he i mean okay because okay yeah they are not nice people but like they are stunning girls Mm-hmm. How does that happen? How does he hook? Well, I suppose neither of them have actually hooked up with him yet, really, have they? So, right. Well, I... yeah. And I, I don't know. Like you tell me, is it a bigger turnoff if he's just a regular schmegular guy, or if he's got this whole room set up with the disco ball and the bed and all that stuff? Like, I think if it was a different setup, it'd be fine. But it's 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 Quagmire's fantasy. it's it's no it's no that's a no that's a hard pass like i'm i'm with her i'm just like yeah i'm out but like um if there was a different setup it's good to be prepared is all i'm saying right like there is a difference between (laughs) having the disco ball and just having some lube in the drawer right yeah like yeah if you want to have some stuff laid out or whatever cool you you do you or like if you want to if you want to you know have some candles pre-lit mm-hmm. i would say that over a fucking like disco light i'm just saying just i'm putting that out there yeah yeah candles versus 70s disco ball like i'm just just saying um and definitely not with the fucking i mean i don't know what he was thinking with the with that fucking techno music i am not opposed to techno music at a rave i do not want to be bumping uglies to that shit like no no yeah i'm not really a big music person when it comes to conjugating the verb right really i fucking love music it you know it 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 depends i think it you know it's just not that music (laughs) certainly not rave music but Eh, a little romantic music is fine, but what's romantic for you? What's romantic music for you? Uh, are we talking like Luther Vandross, or are we talking like yeah, a little you know... soul, a little R and B is good. Okay, all right. But you know, I like not classic rock. You don't need <laughs> Freebird playing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you do, Bo. <laughs> maybe you do. You know, we're we're fucking through the guitar solo. <laughs> And I'm going to climax as soon as he hits that high note. 
I used to tell people what I really <laughs> wanted was ACDCs for those about to rock and some breakaway pants. <laughs> so as soon as you hear the, you know, for those about to rock, fire. And on the fire, you yank the pants off. <laughs> oh my god i have you not done that that's oh. no it's, how is it how does your lady friend feel about that because i feel like that needs to be in your bucket list uh you know i don't know that it, it's come up in a serious conversation <laughs> i feel like you you should have a birthday coming up soon though and i feel like she she, she needs to cater to your fantasies it's yeah it, we're still several months away from a birthday but yeah i i don't disagree she's got time to prepare that's is all right. i'm saying that's right, right? You've been given fair warning. My <laughs> right? like I can't, you, I'm sorry. you have eight months to get this together. <laughs> right. I'm ordering so, the breakaway know. pants and I definitely have the ACDC music. <laughs> right. All you got to do is show up and yeah. just sit back for the show. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what I like to tell a lady. Just sit back and enjoy the show. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. That's the slogan for our show now. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy the show. Right. It was a whole different context now. <laughs> don't you dare move. That's what I tell women. <laughs> oh, seriously, bro, don't. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't want a participant is, <laughs> is my rule. Um, anyway. Just a mirror is fine. Yeah, I just, I'm really looking at me. It's, it's you're doing the Dave Z flex. That, you're right. It, it's my performance that I'm interested in. <laughs> Which, by the way, if anyone hasn't listened to Summer Series two ago, Dave Z uh, said that he had one time done the... Um, um, <laughs> I don't think you'll care that I'm saying this. He said on the Summer Series, for fuck's sake, um, that during sex, he did, the, he did the Patrick Bateman arm flex in the mirror. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now I just... We just... Well, there's a few of us, and I just know it's the Dave Z flex. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Daisy, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I'll yeah, i tell you, I don't need a mirror. I mean, they, like, I've got a mirror in my bedroom, but it's not mounted over the bed or anything. <laughs> it's just, you know, part of a bureau. But yeah. every now and again, like, yeah, if you want to throw a glance at the mirror, just be like, oh, look at this. Look at what's going on here. Totally understandable. But if yeah. your attention is more on the mirror than your partner that's where it crosses a line um okay so i used to live in <laughs> i used to live in this flat and it was one of those like new build flats we were the first people in there with me and my friend and um we had those built-in wardrobes which the whole entire door was just one long mirror so like essentially i had a wall of mirror <laughs> uh-huh. I'm with you. <laughs> and um uh, I'm I'm not gonna say as I so far as I did like anything remotely like the Dave Z Flex, but like there was one point <laughs> there was one time where I was going down on a guy and I was like, Oh Jesus Christ. Okay. So I was like on my knees and oh, I'm so glad my parents don't listen to this show, right? Um and um and I was basically just using the mirror just to make sure that what like he was seeing and what like from every angle was looking all right and I basically just like was just watching myself do that <laughs> for like the entire time <laughs> really yeah. what was he looking at I don't know I was looking at myself <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think he was just looking at you look at yourself <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> just like like, hey, focus. I don't know. <laughs> Eyes up here. Uh, yeah. Hey, I'm up here. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's fucking back at you, mate. Like, staring at boobs all night. Um, but yeah, <laughs> no, like, um, <laughs> how did it make you feel, huh? Objectified much? Yeah. Uh, no, to um, be objectified. <laughs> what, a, what a life. <laughs> um but yeah no so i <laughs> i haven't done like hey check me out during sex in fact i vehemently avoid looking at myself during sex if that ever was like a thing but like blowjobs is apparently okay with me <laughs> look you you have to know where your lines are <laughs> right 
uh, again, this is all. Like, there was a space, by the way, of me being like 18 to 21, mm. where I was just very, very, very single, um, <laughs> which is where most of these stories come from. Uh-huh. So I just wanted to sort of like reiterate like this. I am I am a grown up now. I am a mother. Um, my kid will never hear this show. And um, yeah, like I am <clears throat> respectable now. Uh, but back then I was a fucking whore bag. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, those are prime hormone years where not only are is your brain not fully formed, but your <laughs> it hormones, really was not. Yeah, but your hormones are telling you to procreate as much as possible. Plus, there's yeah. booze. And I was going to say the brain cells you have fully formed, you're killing off with various like narcotics and shit. Yeah. So. Yeah, for and sure. I want to say as well, the reason why it, I to twenty one is because I I met a guy and I'm also very monogamistic. Is that a word? Monogamistic. Yeah, my, if you can say it and you can spell it, it's a word. Sure. Okay. Cool. Um. So yeah, that's why that cut off was twenty one. Now there was a brief period between the age of twenty five and twenty six where I was also very very single. Um. But yeah just in case I was like, huh, I wonder what happened at the age of twenty one. It's nothing exciting. I just I met someone. Right. Found, found the joys <laughs> of a steady relationship. Yeah, sure, joys. Let's go with that. Because <laughs> <Well, laughs> it wasn't the best relationship. Eh, you know, eh, like every relationship that doesn't end in marriage is just a learning process. Like it is, Oh yeah. you know, it is the thing that at the end of it, you're like, all right, what can I take from this? That hopefully mm-hmm. makes me <laughs> either a better partner or, you know, here here's what i i learned that i like yeah or don't like or don't you like yeah. don't want that yeah, yeah. for uh, sure some of my taking of it this is definitely what i don't want uh but the next guy i got with is my is my fiance and father to my kid now so i think i learned i learned i think you know it might take me a little bit to get there but when i learn a lesson i think i learned it pretty well you know you landed in a good place um yeah so fine. uh <laughs> speaking of landing in a good place uh Wait. tree is in nick's room and then uh, the killer, it turns out, is there as well. <laughs> yeah. And while she's not looking, uh, Tree is like getting a text from Danielle uh, from downstairs that's like, are you <laughs> hooking up with my boyfriend? And she's like, no, I would never do that to you uh, <laughs> via, via text. And meanwhile, the baby face kills Nick and then... Um, ends up killing tree with a uh, the neck of a broken bong yeah 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 <coughs> yeah that's pretty brutal yeah and so she once more wakes up in carter's room and this time she's like oh my god something something terrible is happening here yeah yeah and this is no longer my life as we know it jim Yes, that's right. So she's super freaked out. She grabs the Tylenol, grabs her clothes, takes off, uh, has no time for Carter. No, none. (laughs) And goes to her room and tells Lori, her roommate, like, oh my God, somebody is after me. Somebody keeps killing me. And Lori kind of calms her down and is like, look, you should probably take the day off, relax in the room. Hey, did you see this cupcake I made for you? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, it's your birthday. Oh, here you go. This is definitely what you're in the mood for. Right. And she's like, fuck all that. Uh, She ends up (laughs) locking herself in her bedroom and nails boards over the windows to keep anyone from getting in. But uh, despite her best efforts, uh, the killer gets in anyway. And and once more, she's stabbed to death. Yeah, you know, there, there's a whole scene where she's trying to escape and all that stuff. But that's what happens. Yeah, she yeah. just gets stabbed to death again. Yeah, fucking harsh. Can you imagine like having to do that every day? Just get stabbed to death and yeah, wake right. up. Well, I think you get to that Groundhog Day point. I mean, you get to this later in the movie. But, uh, but that Groundhog Day thing of like, well, is there any way we can have a little fun with this? Yeah. And, you know, like, if I am if I know that I'm immortal, like, it's the Bill Murray thing of, like, I've discovered that I'm a god. That I cannot <laughs> yeah. be killed. Um, 
so yeah it's terrible but also i would just wait until you saw the baby like i would have a gun and as soon as baby face popped out somewhere i would just pop myself in the head yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh i went with like killing baby face but all right if you want to go ahead kill yourself yeah but it's probably just my own depressive nature <laughs> I'm just like this is probably my fault somehow uh, no. <laughs> oh, but... no 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 uh so when she wakes up the following day and she you know flips out again but when carter finds her at lunch um that's the point where she kind of throws her arms around this guy and is like i need your help yeah and so she explains what's going on to carter who is like are you sure that you're living the same day over and over again and somebody's trying to kill you and she's like i understand how this sounds but what i've got to do is i've got to figure out who it is that's trying to kill me yeah and he said and carter says well you know is is there anything special about today and she's like well it's my birthday he's like oh okay well so who would know it's your birthday and who would want to kill you yeah and she's like well everyone knows it's my birthday because my sorority let it slip because this is something that she keeps under wraps she doesn't let people know it's her birthday for personal reasons mm. <clears throat> and uh <clears throat> but yeah like her so Rosie has this whole kind of surprise party planned, which she obviously now knows about having gone through this day. And uh, yeah, so she, you know, she's um, like, well, pfft, everyone knows it's my birthday. <laughs> yeah. And then she starts going like listing off all the people who could potentially have an issue with her. And it turns out also everyone could have an issue with her. <laughs> right. And I think it's one of the first moments where she starts to clock like, oh, I may not be the best person. <laughs> Yeah. She spat at a taxi cab driver or something or other, didn't she? Like <laughs> an Uber driver or something. Yeah. Yeah, she like spat at him. It's just like, what? What possible reason could you have for spitting on a guy like that? Uh, I don't know, actually, some Uber drivers. But yeah. Sure. Uh but yeah, it's you know, it uh, not only is it her understanding, hey, I'm I'm kind of a terrible person that a lot of people might want to kill. <laughs> <laughs> like not just have an issue with me but flat out want me dead <laughs> yeah so she she has to figure out who this is and she she you know makes a list of all the people that would be most likely to want to kill her uh-huh. and she starts with tim the the guy that you know she told did not have a foot long <laughs> yeah did not have a foot long oh bless him and there, <laughs> there's a great moment where she like sneaks up to see what he's doing in his dorm room <sighs> I love it so much. And he's looking at gay porn. And yeah. she has this real like, oh. Oh, he's gay. <laughs> it's just her reaction is so wholesome. Yeah, right, it is. That's You're right. That's the word for it. It is a very like, well, bless his heart. Yeah, because he's trying to hide if someone's knocking on the door and he's like trying to like hide it or whatever. And it's like, oh, dude. No, and like there's this really great moment later where we kind of like come back around to this and it's just it's one of my most favorite moments and she says this thing and I wrote it down because I'm gonna say it and I don't care but like it's just uh it's so lush it's just so fucking lush oh when she and then, yeah. yeah when when she talks to him later yeah so yeah yeah we'll get to it so um she ends up getting killed by the baby face as soon as she sees Tim then yeah yeah after... Well, there's this whole montage, isn't there? Because she kind of goes through the days. Because, yeah, because, like, uh, fucking Carter said, well, you know, you can do this and you try and figure out who the killer is and stuff. So she has this whole thing. And so this whole thing is, like, her going through these days and getting killed again and again in an effort to try and work out who the murderer is, all yeah. kind of fucking Jessica fletcher style And um, she... But there's this really... It's a really great montage because it does so much. Not only do we have like fun with the fun that she ends up having as you say you know it's the kind of groundhog day moment but like also we see this transition of her turning from this like uber bitch to this empowered decent person yes the certainly the beginnings of it and also you see her you know like obviously this is something that she's confided in uh carter to and so like you see that kind of burgeoning relationship uh, even though yeah. she believes that they had sex, um, 
you know, they... But does she still at this point? Because doesn't he, hasn't he said already to her? I don't know. Or is it later? I think it's he later. It, is it later? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. I'll... I, I think she believes still that they had sex at this point. They've had sex. Yeah. And because she just never, like, she believes it's true. So she never asks him. And he, I, you know, I think that he believes that she doesn't or she would have remembered that or something yeah you yeah know. there's this definite miscommunication on that level yeah real threes company kind of set up and yeah <laughs> uh then she she checks out stephanie the her uh professor's wife yeah um but she sees her take off in a car and then gets drowned in the uh fountain yep um yeah outside their house and yep. then she goes after Danielle, and those two end up just getting in a cat fight that results in both of them getting hit by a bus. <laughs> yeah. And That's so funny. So she ends up getting down to her uh, professor slash lover, Gregory. Yeah. Oh, we also as well, the bit where, sorry, this isn't a... a, a a tick off the list but she just struts through the campus naked oh right yeah uh just for funsies and she like dyes her hair purple and shit just for funsies because it won't matter the next day yeah um, there, like... there is a certain freedom of that there's a great scene where when she and carter are talking that she just burps and farts and oh that, yeah that that's quite good yeah um uh, and she's like who cares you're not gonna remember this tomorrow anyway so it doesn't matter yeah exactly exactly like if we were all just so free yeah, there is a freedom to it but also you know as as she points out like it is its own prison as well like you can't yeah you you can't progress your life at all and all she wants at a certain point is just for it to be the next day and yeah she needs it to be tuesday already yeah and so after she begins to suspect well maybe it is uh my professor that I'm having this affair with, she goes to the hospital and while, while she's there, um, she has had an x-ray where the doctor essentially tells her like, you know, you look fine, but internally you have all this scarring that suggests that you should kind of be dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's just like, yeah, I know doc. It's fine. <laughs> Right, but that kind of sets up this idea that, oh, maybe she only has so many of these before she really will die. Yeah, because it's after this and where she wakes up and she's just like, oh, shit, like, I feel kind of rough. Like, yeah, you know, a truck's hit her, she's been stabbed, she's been drowned, she's been whatever. And it's like, oh, yeah, no, this is, uh, this is starting to smart a little bit. Right. Yeah, I'm not just... Oh, recovering. I have a theory on this. I have a theory on this as well. Um, where did I write it? Hold on. Wait, hold on fuck okay so here's a theory right so um you know like when you wake up in the morning so you know how like um oh, i'm skipping ahead a little bit but um later on one of the days carter gets gonked by the killer mm -hmm. like he gets neck broken right mm -hmm. so what if when you wake up in the morning with like randomly like a stiff neck or you're suddenly sick or something for like no apparent reason what if this is happening to someone else in your life and then you died or did something like you ate something dodgy during that their last 24 hours and the stiffness or pain or whatever that you feel is something that happened to you that you can't remember since you woke up so what all right i mean yeah potentially but not just the bad stuff you know like you got the the stiff neck and you know a a, a sore knee or whatever but yeah. what about just a good old-fashioned morning erection? Yeah, sure. Like, yeah. So, you know, it yeah, ain't all like bad. It may, yeah, maybe like it's just um, like the sort of the leftovers from someone else's repeated 24 hours that you have got through, but you can't remember because it's like all repeated or whatever. Eh, you know, I, I would like to be aware just so I could do the tree stuff. <laughs> you know yeah like, but it's not your 24 hours though it's you're, yeah. you're just in there 24 hours you're like their friend or something and you're just getting like a little bit of the the hangover of it yeah i'd still like to know 
<laughs> I, be, because you could still have some fun with it even if it was your friends you know like the 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 backwash of their day yeah <laughs> um which is my new science fiction novel the backwash <laughs> of tomorrow oh i would buy that shit in a second right um, yeah that's not a ca- that is a catchy title if nothing else yeah i'll <laughs> i'll run it past some friends of mine see if uh if we, we can get that on the the slate at paramount um, yeah yeah 100 right. you heard it here first though folks yeah. TMTM. oh and i'm like mailing the idea to myself so don't try to steal it it'll be posted oh yeah we're gonna take like pictures with like today's paper and shit mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh so anyway so yeah <laughs> red uh we red herring with the professor Right, right. And so while she's kind of going through his drawers and stuff, and she finds like a baby mask in there and that kind of thing, but then the killer shows up and stabs Gregory and then chases her into the parking lot where she takes Gregory's car, uh, drives off, and then is like, I did it. I got away. I'm going to make it till tomorrow. (laughs) Oh. And then a, a cop flashes some blues and pulls her over so typical she just cannot catch a break <laughs> yeah it's really good. like it's all and uh she's like look i don't have a license i don't have any registration uh i know how this looks and he's like are you on drugs because if you're on drugs you know like well, i'm just gonna write you a ticket for the other stuff but she's like wait a second that's right if i'm drunk or on drugs you've got to take me to prison right and uh and she, he's like yeah 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 i mean we got to that's how it works we take you to the the tank overnight <laughs> and, and she's like well then i am completely drunk that's me sir i'm really i'm high on drugs yes i am on the weed yeah. i think she says and um, yeah so he's like all right if that's if that's how you want to play this and he like cuffs her and and she's like here let me help you yeah it's like oh this is the first time i've ever been handcuffed you know like it's, yeah <laughs> this is like a day at the beach really happy about it yeah so happy and he's so confused by this whole thing <laughs> and so he gets her in the back of the car and while he's shutting the door a car comes by and just taters this guy oh my god yeah killing the cop and sure enough it's the baby face killer and obviously tree though kind of gloats here and it's like it doesn't matter like i you know kill the copper no i'm locked in the in the back of this car and the killer then sees that there is uh the the gas tank is leaking yep and so the killer then drops the birthday candle into the pool of gas which it blows up the car also blowing up tree inside yeah that birthday candle is such a fucking clue for sure way. yeah yeah yeah. Like, like which you don't realize i didn't i do you know, it's only since i've watched this film about three times before this well, i think it's probably my fourth watch and it's only been this time i was like huh they're just putting that out there i think it's just because i was really paying attention you know like like really really paying attention to it because yeah. i was obviously doing it for the show i was just like oh my god it's right there clear as day wow and, and i like that it totally makes sense like the movie doesn't bend itself into pretzels to hide who the killer is so that when you know it you're like oh okay well this all makes sense yeah yeah there's not it's not far it's not like a stretch you're like huh yeah okay yeah okay i see that yeah for sure yeah it's and- good it's good so tree then of course wakes up in carter's room again and this, this time, is so great <laughs> she just yells silence <laughs> yeah and just shoves her hand out fucking thanos style and like <laughs> just silence and just storms out of there and i am like i was i was absolutely gagging and laughter with that it's just perfect her delivery of that is just so perfect and right and she convinces him hey i'm living the same day over and over again there's this great bit where she takes him through the campus and is like car alarm sprinklers this guy's yeah. about to fall you know that kind of thing yeah we have we seen this before in other sort of these kind of time loop type things but i always i always find it i don't know if it's because like i like lists 
notes and things <laughs> and this sort of like ticking off is very satisfying to me um but like I really enjoy it and like it's it's done really well and I really is exactly the only way that you can prove to somebody that it's you know this is what's happening right yeah if you you're either that or you're a psychic in either way something you know supernatural is afoot right supernatural anyway <clears throat> right right Sammy. There is an episode called Mystery Spot where they do this, by the way. They do have a Groundhog Day where Dean dies every single day. I have seen this one, yeah. It's a good one. It's a good one. It anyway, yeah, good. carry on. Uh, so they end up going to this burger place nearby. And this is where she talks about, like, I, I'm starting to feel weaker every time yeah. this happens to me. Uh, and I'm, I think I'm running out of lives. And there's another phone call from her dad. And she kind of comes clean about what's going on there, which is this is essentially the third anniversary of, of her mother's death. Yeah. Well, it's, her, it's, it's been three years since she's died, but it's her mother's birthday as well as hers. And like every, uh, every year they would, she would skip out of school and they would go to the beach and her dad would buy a big cake. And earlier we've seen her watch this video of them both blowing out this like singular candle on a cake. And then they, the, the mum just face plants her like in the cake, like face smushes her, which is great. And like, it's obviously a really fond memory. Like she's laughing. It's the first time I think, uh, like the first time in this film that we see her really show some like humanity. Um, and like show us sort of like who she is without this kind of facade of like stone cold bitch um, like underneath it all and so yeah so that makes sense when we hear this kind of like explanation that she gives Carter and um, and yeah and it's just this really sad thing that she just now instead of it being like a really happy day it's just really melancholy and full of just awkward conversations between her and her dad and while they basically just stepped her around the fact that her mum isn't there anymore and it's really fucking depressing and so although it's kind of harsh in the respect that you know she stands her dad up um on a day that is obviously extremely painful for him as well it's understandable that she just she can't do it anymore right and you also understand why she is the way she is to some degree like yeah. she's she's running from this trauma and that's where all the drinking comes from and all the bad behavior and all that stuff like you know she is yes she she's just bearing all of that pain and and running from it yeah and, and it's easier to be switched off emotionally like that than to feel things if you're if what you're feeling is gonna like hurt you so much oh for sure you're right exactly exactly yeah and while they're having this conversation also a news report pops up that's like oh there's this serial killer that uh you know was a murderer of young women and yeah best serial killer name ever though by the way john toons which is i think is a reference to the x-files yeah i thought that with yeah the two yeah the oh that's a fucking creepy ass episode yeah with uh oh. Brad Dourif, i think what played tombs or is that yeah, right? yeah uh yeah yeah i'm pretty sure it's brad Dourif. uh oh it's come up again brad Dourif. that's in chucky earlier and now uh, we've got that's right we you can't escape brad Dourif on this show or or, oh, or any show nor should you really <laughs> right um I'm gonna look it up. Brad you carry on. I'm yeah, gonna look okay. it up. Um, I'll look it up. You, you carry on. Yeah, find out who it was. It was either him or it was that creepy guy from uh, Green Mile. One of the two. Yeah, I'm, actually, I'm pretty sure it's the guy from Green Mile. Hold yeah. on, I'll look. You carry on. You carry on. So basically, they now have a theory like, oh, it's this Tombs guy. If we go to the hospital, stop him, then I can, you know, move on to the next day. And so that's what they do. They go to the hospital. Uh, it turns out, though, that Toombs has already um, escaped his bonds and has killed the se security guard there and escaped. And so, <laughs> in a great moment, Tree just has an axe and is going after this dude. While Carter uh, ends up trying to protect her. It's the guy from Green Mile. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Doug Hutchison. That's right. The guy who married the 16-year-old or whatever. You would like him. What? Wait, yeah, what? He married... Uh, In real life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He married 
uh, when he was in his thirties or something, he married a sixteen-year-old. Can we? Can we not? But <laughs> that I would like that. <laughs> I would not. Uh, <laughs> let's just not get that out of context. Um, <laughs> oh, that is that's weird and creepy. No. Yeah, no, yeah. No. It was a whole thing where like he had to um, get the parents' permission. It was Cor- Courtney Stoddard, I think, was her name. Oh God, I have no idea. I didn't even know about this. The parents gave permission for that. Well, yeah, because she was underage, but with permission, with a note. Oh, um, my God, that's so crazy. Yeah, it was really weird. Like, um, Yeah, Courtney Stodden, they are now divorced. Yeah, and she, like... Shockingly. <laughs> right. Uh, it, it, the whole thing seemed real, real creepy. Like, she was six, uh, yeah. 16, he was 50? When they got yeah. married? Yeah, I don't know. I'm looking at the... Uh... No, it doesn't say anything about it in his uh, in his trivia section. But yeah, yeah, yeah. so gross. Yeah, creeping uh, films and creeping real life. Apparently, apparently so. Ugh. Yeah, that is that is Ugh. some really warped behavior. Yeah, uh, that's weird. And also, she got like a lot of plastic surgery uh, oh. and that kind of thing. Like it was. Oh no! It was really unsettling. You know, that, I'm not opposed to plastic surgery, you do you, but that is clearly some sort of like manipulation kind of like what's the word? Like a coercion. When you Yeah, like when you like groom someone. Yeah, for sure. No, it was totally like I'm going to make the the, the perfect woman for me. I'm gonna make you a woman. Right. Oh! Yeah, oh! Yeah, yeah. It's not cute when it's like that. It's only cute when fucking Frankenfurter does it. And it's Tim Curry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh and he assembled that that young man out of body parts not and that's know, okay because right. i'm sure those body parts were above age they were all above 21 they absolutely were have you seen the guy the guy's a fucking tank of course they were yeah. that ain't no 13 year old bicep that's canon is what yeah. that is 100%. Uh, but yeah, yeah so so Ugh. uh yeah carter is trying to uh, protect tree from uh this tombs guy uh, and he, as we talked about earlier, he grabs yeah. uh, Carter and breaks his neck. And that's the point where, you know, she realizes, Tree realizes, like, oh, I can't kill him. Because if I do and we move forward to the next day, Carter will still be dead. And I can't let that happen because yeah. he's become my partner in crime. Yeah. And also, I kind of fancy him a little bit. Yeah. He's, you know, he's an adorable little guy. He is so cute. His smile. Ugh. And so she ends up going to the top of this bell tower at the university. And before he can, before Tombs can kill her, she, she has a really great moment where she like wraps the rope around her neck. And is like, see you soon. And, yeah. you know, jumps off uh, the, the platform and snaps her own neck. Yeah. And yeah. So she wakes up the next day, and this is the point where she's like, she's thrilled to see Carter because he's alive again. Um, and it, it's positive energy tree. It it is yeah. <laughs> that sounds it, weird, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's the it's like the perfect day from Groundhog Day, where he's like, where Bill Murray does everything right, like yes. she, you know, signs the petition for the girl. Uh, yeah, she's like, you go save the world. Yeah, is. Love you know, it. warns the people about the sprinklers coming on. Apo- she gets a pillow for the guy who falls over. Yeah, uh, uh, this is also the the Tim scene. Yeah, yeah. I want to say the bit. So, Please. like, yeah. So he's all like, "Why didn't you not text me back?" And she's like, "Look, Tim, let's get real. I know you don't like girls. Stop trying to be someone you're not. Love is love, right? Now you go out there and get yourself a fine piece of man ass. Just the." best <laughs> my delivery did not do it justice i apologize go watch this film and go to this bit because it's fucking great and it's just like i'm not a closeted gay man but if i were i would feel so inspired by that i think like i would just be like oh, i want to go out and get me a piece of fine man ass you know like sure sure <laughs> it's just such a lovely and love is love and yeah and it's oh it's just it's again it's just very wholesome 
And I've just written like best line in anything, just all the applause and cheering. Yay. <laughs> yeah. It's it, right. It's her kind of settling all the scores of like correcting all the mistakes of her life. And like yeah. when, when she gets to her dorm room, she apologizes to Lori. And it's like, I've been really terrible to you and I'm really sorry. Um, yeah. Let's start fresh. Right. Goes to uh, class, pulls Gregory, her professor out of class to say yeah. that she is breaking up with him. And he's like, well, you know, look, the only reason you've been passing is because we've been fucking. So don't expect me to go easy. And she's like, I already dropped the class. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. She like says that she's walks off, giving him the face, like dropped it already. It's like, <laughs> yeah, fuck you douchebag professor. When uh, they have the lunch meeting with all the sorority sisters, yes, Danielle oh. gives Becky the shit about the stuff on her tray. And Tree, meanwhile, has an equally large tray of just junk food. Like, it's even bigger, I would argue. She just shoves, like, a handful of fries in her mouth. And she's like, oh, my God, this is so good. Have a few calories. It won't kill you. And she, like, throws a bit of cake or something at, like, Danielle. And, like, <laughs> and Danielle is so disgusted. And it's just, it's so good. And, like, Becky's like, yeah. And then, and then what does she do, right? What does she do? What does she do? She pours the chocolate milk right on Danielle's head. And everyone cheers and laughs. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a moment. It's really good. Like, from then on, you know that sorority is never going to be the same. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, if it went down like that another time. <laughs> well, yeah, if there's uh, another another day to follow. But, yeah, and then there's, like, Carter comes to return the jewelry. And Tree just runs up to him and hugs him and kisses him and yeah uh she says like how would you like to join me for my birthday tonight yeah take me out for my birthday yeah. and he's just like okay because what else is he gonna say because she's adorable and he's adorable and they're adorable so, and he's just like his little kind of smitten smile he's just like i don't know what's happening here but i am enjoying it you know like because he's had no context for anything like all the history that they that she knows about between them, he has no clue about. So he's just like, there's this really nice, attractive girl who's just giving me a kiss and wants to spend her birthday with me, and I'm very okay with this. <laughs> right, yeah. And she, she has the advantage of kind of knowing who he is and that he is actually yeah. a very nice guy who literally will, would die for her. Yeah, and also we have, at this point, haven't we, we have now found out that he they haven't slept together. Right. And he would never do that. Like he wouldn't, he, you know, he was like, you were really, really wasted. Like, no, like, obviously not. Like, don't be silly kind of thing. And it's just like, and obviously like her experience with guys has not been that. And, um, you know, and, and it also as well, like there's this bit where like, cause they don't, they, it's not a big like flag horn or anything about it. But there are a couple of moments that do allude to kind of like assault and stuff on campus. Like there's mm -hmm. this bit where, you know, where she's in, where she's in uh, Nick's room and she's getting like attacked by the killer and he's, they're on a bed and this guy walks in, he's really drunk and stuff. And, he, and she's just like, help me, help me. And, you know, he doesn't know what's going on. Like, but at the very least she's being attacked and he just kind of like high, almost high fives. Like he doesn't high five him, but he kind of like cheers, like, way kind of thing. Mm -hmm and walks back out and it's just like wow okay and then like obviously like this whole insinuation that a guy would sleep with her even though she was pass out wasted you know like and she's just and it's not as if she's even like horrifically outraged she's not going to anyone she's not she's just like oh well that happened you know like that sucks but i guess this is what happens you know like it's just it's as i say it's not massively it's not like a big kind of here's what this film is about or here's what we're trying to say here but it's just these little kind of subtleties that it's just kind of like huh okay you know yeah yeah i mean it's right it, it, it like you said it's not the focus of the movie but also it doesn't it's not like that last black christmas movie or nothing uh <laughs> yeah but but it definitely yeah i mean it kind of like you said this is her experience with the guys on campus and so yeah. for Carter to be the person that's like, no, I would never do. Why? Why would you think that of me? Yeah. I yeah. Would and never, to be I like never... out. Yeah. Like to be horrified at the thought of doing that as well. No less. Yeah. And because he's the perfect guy. He's he's like he's funny and charming and nice and, and uh, an attractive guy who, like I said, would die for her and would also never take advantage of her. So. 
Yeah. You know, she oh. she sees all of that and he has no idea that she knows all <laughs> he has of that. No idea. Yeah, and he has no idea he really who she is or like they've never right. met before last night according to him. So like yeah. It's it's a, they're they're like you know, you have always have like when you're a couple you're like so how did you guys meet? You know, like yeah. their stories are very different at this point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, he saved my or he tried to save my life. He was the one person I could count on and he's like I j- she got drunk and I, I walked home. <laughs> I, yeah, I took her back to my place so nothing bad would happen to her and now we're married. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Here are our kids. Do you want to see? <laughs> right. So um we get you know as as we have discussed, I'm a big softy and this is the scene that gets me in this movie where it's yeah, it's good. She tree goes to lunch with her dad. A- again, she is making up for all of the, the bad things that she's done throughout the movie. She shows up late uh, to this lunch at like a country club or something with, uh, with her dad. And, and she essentially comes clean and is like, I know I've been avoiding you and I've been a- avoiding these lunches. And the reason is it's because it's hard to be around you because when I look at you, I think about my mother who is gone now and yeah. she says, look, I love you and I'm sorry I hurt you. Yeah. And, oh, it's so good. And, yeah. you know, and then they end up kind of laughing together and have lunch and it's wonderful. Yeah, it's really sweet. And I think as well, it's like, it's perfect. He's, he's got this really tiny, tiny, tiny role, but it's perfect casting for the dad because he just looks so sweet and little, you yeah. know, like, yeah, yeah. and you just, you know, when she's like, I'm sorry, I hurt you. And um, he's just looks like the cutest man on the planet. Like you could just put him in your pocket and like, how, how could anyone like, leave him on his own to have lunch like how could anyone like do you know what I mean like he's just the sweetest guy this this film is filled with sweet guys honestly um <laughs> I but mean, like, some really terrible ones but also some very sweet and ones. there's some really terrible ones but there are some really really sweet ones to counter it and he is one of them he just has this real I don't even know how to describe it but his face is just the sweetest face it's just all like sl- you know, slanted up eyebrows and big eyes and just very kind of like I almost see his bottom lip trembling a little bit because he's just so sweet. Mm-hmm. <sighs> anyway. So yeah. after we have, you know, uh, patched that up, Tree then goes after Tombs. Like, it's the big, I'm going to take this guy down once and for yeah. all. Um, yeah. She... And she means business because she has a ponytail. <laughs> right. And, and the Buffy leather jacket. You know, yeah. anytime a blonde girl has a ponytail and a bike le- leather biker jacket on fucking get out of the way that nerf herder is playing guitar in the background mm-hmm. it's all oh, happening yeah. it is yeah and she shows up uh like this security guard that's guarding tombs she ends up pulling a knife on him and takes his gun and is yeah. like hey you need to go get back up because this guy's about to die uh he's about to get away and then he walks into tombs room and she is about to shoot him, but then screws up and has left the safety on. Oh, yeah. And because, you know, she's not a killer. And so. No, no. Tubes she's probably gets... never handled a gun before. Right, right. Yeah, this is the first time. And so Tubes gets up and they, they, they wrestle a little bit. Um, he slams her against the wall a few times. And then. Yeah. At this point. Whether it's planned or not, there she remembers like, oh, there's about to be this blackout. No, no, it is because it's timed on the watch. Yeah. Like the beeper goes off and she just sort of like grins up at him and then the blackout and then it comes up about a second later and bam, she's gone. Right. And when the lights come back up, she has gotten out of his grasp and is now pointing the gun at him and it's like, thanks for the tip and murders yeah. him. Yeah, bam, bam. Uh, Literally and, like that. Just like that. <laughs> and then, yeah, so she takes off and has her, like, 16 candles moment with Carter back in her yeah. room where, you know, they... Oh, my God, it really is. I didn't even think of that. Of yeah. It oh, it's totally... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And eats the cupcake that Lori, Lori has uh, left for her birthday 
after blowing out the candle. Yeah. And then we cut to her waking up yet again in Carter's room. Oh, you feel that gut punch. Like, you feel it. Like, because you're with her. You're so sure. Because it's, it's the perfect day. Yeah. And, like, this breaks the cycle. This She's survived. She's, you know, she's done it. She's done everything. She's figured it out. She's gone through everything. She's did everything that she's supposed to do. And she's still not rewarded. Right. <sighs> and she, like, flips out and you know, makes her way back to her dorm. She's like, I can't believe, you know, I'm stuck. I'm still stuck. And, uh, <laughs> she gets back to the dorm where Lori once more is like, Hey, you know, happy birthday. Here's a cupcake. And she's like, ah, I can't believe it. I died in my sleep. Wait a second. I <laughs> ate that cupcake before I went to sleep last night. And I never ate the cupcake before that. And then she starts to piece it all together and she realizes that her roommate, Lori, has been the killer this whole time. Da, da, da. And and she's like, oh, you had the it was the perfect crime because Toombs was at this hospital. And so it would look like, you know, I I was killed by this serial killer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is where I like the face, the, the baby face mask has come into it at the hospital. It's why it's there. Cause like, the, cause she works at the same hospital that Gregory works mm -hmm. at. And, uh, the candle that the, she drops to like blow up the car and shit. Cause like every time she sees that she doesn't eat the ca cake. So she has to think fast. And then, you know, the serial killer basically lands on her lap. So it's just like opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then like, yeah. And then like, so all of these things that we start seeing and like, you know, at the party, she's like, you know, Danielle makes a comment that she's not there because, um, and then like, it's kind of explained because um, Laurie has said she's working a double shift, but is she though? And like, every time there's, she's not around, but she's such a big character. She's not, we literally have this one moment with her in the morning that you kind of just sort of don't really think about her the rest of the time. It's not like a character that keeps coming back, like someone like Danielle or Carter or or, the, or Gregory or whatever. We only see her at this very small one point in the day. Mm -hmm. and, th and there's so, just yeah. enough mention of her throughout the movie that you're like, oh, like you see her at the hospital and all that stuff. And it's just yeah, enough yeah. to explain the beats of the film without being yeah. obvious. But once you know and you're watching the movie for a second or third or fourth time or however many times you've seen it... Um, it, it all just fits together reasonably well so that yeah. you can just kind of enjoy the, the mechanics. Because the movie yeah. is enough about Tree becoming a better person that knowing the resolution of the mystery doesn't spoil the rest of the movie. No, no, it doesn't. I As I say, this is like my fourth time watching it and I have so, like just as much fun. Like this is not one that that is diminished from repeat viewings at all in fact it's almost gains because of these little moments and the little kind of like oh so that's it like you know like i said i like the first time i realized about the fucking candle mm -hmm. i was like oh my god that's a fucking look you know like it's shit like that um the only thing that i would say and this is just this is something that just kind of makes me laugh now because it's kind of a it's something that i associate with like the screen movies is how like it's so clearly a guy <laughs> in like the baby face mask yeah. and stuff like running around and like ha like and this is not to say that women can't be strong women can be strong and you know what she's a nurse so she definitely probably has some upper body strength but like the level of strength that she apparently has to like break carter's neck and shit like um but um but it, it's such a minor like i really don't don't care um it's uh but it's one of those things that's just like oh okay but like it just kind of makes me laugh more than anything because it just reminds me of how scream does this exact same thing right yeah <laughs> where it's just like you know little emma roberts who's like five foot nothing <laughs> is supposed to have like you know whatever sorry spoiler alert from a movie yeah, right. yeah if, you, um, if you haven't seen scream. you haven't seen scream four yet <laughs> yeah. um but yeah like uh yeah but it just it kind of makes me laugh more than anything now it's like yeah so anyway. at, at, during the course of this conversation, at, Lori is like, what are you talking about? You're crazy. I never try to kill you with cupcakes. And Tree's like, oh, yeah? Then how about you eat it? And she's like, I'm not going to eat that. 
and, and she's like, all right, well, I'll take it to the police and let's say, let's see what they have to say about your little recipe here. And yeah. before she can do that, uh, Lori says, you always were a dumb bitch. And then a fight ensues. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they're wrestling for a bit. Then uh, Danielle <laughs> comes in and is like, what's going on in here? And <laughs> while Danielle is distracted, Tree shoves the cupcake into Lori's mouth. Uh, yeah. Who stands up to kind of, you know, get the terrible. Get terrible it out poison. of her mouth. Yeah. <laughs> and then Tree uh, jumps up, grabs a ceiling lamp, and, you know, I mean, truly Buffy Summers her out oh 100 yeah 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 it's great um yeah so we didn't mention but she the reason why she's doing it is because uh she's also having an affair with douchebag professor right right yeah was was uh hated that's the, the fact, main motive right hated the fact that tree was essentially stealing her man the way that you know she was stealing <laughs> nick yeah yeah and, and this yeah and it's and she's just like really you're trying to kill me over some stupid guy like and it is just so ridiculous but like it's kind of a very sad comment on laurie's life <laughs> um, and then yeah she's just like yeah and also you're just a really fucking dumb bitch you know it's just like oh wow she is just batshit crazy like <laughs> i'm pretty sure she'd have reached these levels for kind of any reason like it, they just happened. There had there happened to be an emotional motive for it, but I also reckon that you know she could have just got out of bed one day on the wrong side and just had and just wanted to kill someone. <laughs> mm -hmm. She probably wouldn't have made a great nurse. I'm I'm not gonna lie. She probably would not have or doctor. I don't think she's gonna have seems, had the best bedside manner. <laughs> yeah, seems a little thin on the compassion. Yeah, a little bit. Uh huh. A little uh, bit. I, I'm yeah. a little higher yeah. than you would like on the psychopath. I mean, only a smidge higher because I do like my doctors to have some sign of like ruthlessness to them. But if they would maybe not to be to this degree, like that would be perfect. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, Lori. Like, she gets Buffy summoned out of the window. Yeah, it hits the it hits the pavement below and is dead. Oh, that poor that poor girl, um, who is so sweet. Like she's oh, just right. this the, the girl girl's just listening to earphones. Was, yeah. Yeah, it's just cute pink, like, pink, like, football, is it a football jersey that she's wearing or something or other? I think it's, it's like, a sorority, yeah. Is it, right? And she's just, like, because she, she always smiles at, um, at Tree as she goes by, and she just has one of these, like, smiles that, like, her whole face just lights up, and I don't know why, but I just really like this girl. She literally says nothing in it. She's not in it, but, like, I just really like her. And I feel really bad when she has to deal with the trauma of a of a body landing in front of her, yeah. <laughs> blood splatter everywhere. Yeah. You know, like oh, she ain't gonna smile the same after that, is she? <laughs> yeah, I, I like that she's constantly nice to Tree, who is just completely cold to her, except for <laughs> yeah. you know when she finally comes around. But yeah, it's really great. Um, and so after this horrifying moment of uh of this poor and it, the thing that's crazy about this movie is it's pg-13 i think i it's uh yeah i think it's a i think it's a 12 uh, oh hang on actually i have the case let me have a look um a but it doesn't ever feel like toothless or anything like it feels like it no, gets pretty at brutal all. at times oh it's a it's a 15 here uh let me verify because i feel like that yeah it was pg-13 here in the states which you know we have a different rating system but essentially the same thing it's basically like yeah this is fine for teenagers and yeah. uh and i think that's great uh i, I like th th it's a good teenage young adult kind of horror movie and i i know i sound like a, a, a terrible old man saying that but it, it is. I mean, it's like, oh, this no, isn't agree. completely gory, but it doesn't ever feel like it's pulling punches. It's not super no. bloody, but you still, like, she gets stabbed and blown up and killed with a bong and all kinds of things. So there's never a point where yeah. I'm like, well, they're just cutting away too much in this movie. It, you know, it's it never feels neutered. No, I no, it's not. It's not mean spirited, but it's not. It's equally, it's not. Um... Yeah, as you say, it's not toothless either. Like, it has bite. And uh, I think it's a really good kind of, like, a gateway horror. Like, I'd be quite happy with, like... To be honest, I'd be quite happy if Ava was, like, 12 or something mm -hmm. watching this. Like, I, like, like even... I mean, it depends on her disposition. But, like, 
you know, even like maybe a little bit younger, like 10 or above, just again, it depends on the kid, but like, um, but yeah, like I, it's, it doesn't, it's not got nudity in it. It doesn't, uh, I mean, she walks through naked, but you don't see anything. Um, you see a back, um, and like, you know, it doesn't have like major gore, but it's also like, it's got punch. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's a good one. Um, well, I, I haven't the, the, noticed the taglines for this movie. Let, let me it? throw some of these at you, okay? Oh, it's, hit me, hit me, hit get me. Get up, live your day, get killed again. <laughs> um, that That's the, the main one. There's uh, make every death count. I like that one. That's, that good. I think that's my favorite. Yeah. Um, the, my least favorite, worst birthday ever. <laughs> not crazy about that they're one not, they're not wrong though no 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 um there's how will you die that's terrible that's not good uh that's my worst one this one is all right find your killer or die trying uh i mean i feel like that could be that could be any yeah any movie with a killer killer in it then there's die repeat no, I feel like you could have that. You know, you got the like uh, sleep beat. Is it sleep beat repeat? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Like you could have been like you could have expanded on that, and been a little bit more creative. Uh, I, and here's, I feel it, like I knew where they were going with that one, but they fell short. Yeah, not quite there. No, my, yeah. I, I make every death count. I think is my favorite. Um, yeah. The my number two is this one, which is really long, but I like it. Un, okay. Unlimited amount of lives, unlimited amount of chances to find the killer. It, again, not great, but I like it more than worst birthday ever. Yeah, I think I think what was the first one you said? Get up, live your day, get killed again. I think that might be my second favorite, just yeah. because of the like, just the tone of it is yeah. just kind of oh well, I guess you know. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah right. I I think you're. I make every death count is is. Make every death count is hundred percent. That's the, great. the winner there. Yeah. Why wasn't that on the? Yeah, on the uh, main bit that should have been uh, worst birthday ever. I don't dislike because it's not inaccurate. I, it reminds me of like um, of just like you know really bad summaries of stuff like right. Trying to like you know oh can you summarize this in like three words or less? Worst birthday ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh okay, got you. Uh, yeah. All right. So to to wrap up this movie here, we we have a scene with Tree and Carter back at this burger place where they're watching the news report about uh the, about uh Lori getting killed yeah and <laughs> uh danielle is really hamming it up for the cameras which is great yeah uh she, when she tells what the sister's like shut up i'm trying to do an interview here yeah <laughs> and and this That's is the good. the first time the movie kind of acknowledges the source material where Carter is like, wow, this is just like Groundhog Day. And she's like, what are you yeah. talking about? And yeah. she's like, you know, Groundhog Day. And she's, Groundhog never... Day, Bill Murray. Yeah. And she's like, who's Bill Murray? What? You don't know Ghostbusters? No. It's like, like you know that's exactly what how she's going to be spending her birthday. Yeah. Is watching like all of Bill Murray's back catalog. But yeah, but I really love the fact that like the movie is kind of cheeky about like, obviously this is where we got this, but our main yeah. character has never heard of Bill Murray or Groundhog Day. <laughs> that's why yeah, she very, never says. Very good. Yeah. That's why at no point she's like, it's Groundhog Day. That's what's happening to me is Groundhog Day. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense because someone of her age, like nowadays, probably hasn't seen Groundhog Day. But he is definitely the kind of person he's like the he does seem to be a kind of a film nerd type person. He's got a bunch of movie posters on his dorm room wall yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, like he absolutely has seen Ghostbusters twenty seven times. Oh yeah, yeah. But she's not the type of person and or the type of age bracket like you know those two together they won't have seen she won't have seen it so it's it's very realistic that she wouldn't have done that he would have done but yeah i really love that kind of self-referential sort of <laughs> yeah she has a nod. long in, in the over the course of their relationship she's got a long parade <laughs> of what do you mean you've never seen the warriors well that's what we're watching tonight you know there's a lot yeah, of that yeah. in her future yeah, she's uh, she's turning into a film geek, whether she likes it or not. Right, she is going to know, yeah, a lot more about 70s cinema than she ever wanted to. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then there's 
the 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 last bit is she wakes up um th- in his dorm room and it's her birthday ringtone playing oh, again literally. oh my god and uh and carter and like he just yeah oh you're says awake the same it's, thing yeah, it's yeah. The, the same stuff and she's like what oh my god and he's like no i'm just fucking with you it's fine you're you're it's tuesday yeah it's tuesday and she playfully is pissed off about it for a bit it and then you know they kiss a little more ryan tries to come in the room and they kick him out and then yeah. they then they start kissing all over again and and that's it and then there's a really fun little in title sequence with birthday cards and stuff like that and it's really yeah yeah kind of wonderful um yeah she's very calm to that joke though like if that was me if that had been my experience i would be like hyperventilating i'd be blacking out and shit just like that complete terror followed by that sheer like she is oh that's so funny like oh my god no i would have fucking killed him you know like yeah. you do not fuck around with that shit <laughs> but it's not that film it's not that film <laughs> um but yeah it's uh, uh, uh like I, again i think happy death day is is just a a terrific film i think it's really it's really, really fun, fun. Um, it's really great and i i think the sequel's really good too i know a lot of people i like the sequel yeah there were some people who who don't like it because it's not the same thing again um but i really enjoy it. Uh, sequels sequels are damned if you do and damned if you don't you know yeah. sequels have a hard job i don't like it as much as this one because i can't even remember why but i just remember thinking i don't like it as much as this one but i did like it and also because in this one as well like um you don't have an explanation for why it's groundhog mm-hmm. day um uh, and you don't need it but in the second one they give you that explanation and although i never needed it i actually quite enjoyed it because if i remember rightly it did make sense it yes it, and it, it makes does. when you view this and i think when you go back and view this film it sort of changes the way that you i want to say i've solely seen it once i don't have it I, I i have this film which is why i've seen it multiple times but i haven't got the second one so i've only seen it once but um i think am i am i right in saying that it kind of it goes back and sort of like changes the way that you would end up watching this film or something. Yeah. It gets very sci-fi with, with the whole premise. And, and I don't think that's bad. I think it, it's just, it's expanding the mythology. And I know that they were, uh, talking a, a third happy death day movie, which I'm totally good with. I I hope one of these days they do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think happy death day to you, um, underperformed some, and yeah and that's why they never did the uh the third one but i you know i think it will come out eventually yeah it feels like i mean why not and um but anyway yeah even if you don't care for the second one the first one's just an absolute hoot Um, it is it really is i I, you know here's a funny thing somebody reached out to me because we we always say like hey if you've got a story about you know relationships or one night in this case uh-huh. one night stands somebody reached out to me and and the question was i'm not gonna out who it was uh okay. but they said hey is this where message me on facebook and said is this where i should give you my story and i said yes this is perfect and then there was no response <laughs> <laughs> well i have a i have a story oh please that one of my friends sent me okay um and it's my friend Ollie because it's he assures me it's definitely not him Uh Um, and I do believe him because he is the type of guy who would say yeah no that was me you know um it's really gross though so I'm a little bit dubious about it like it made me gag okay okay (laughs) I'm just putting a warning out there okay if you are at all squeamish Uh, yeah okay fair warning I, I feel like we have officially said like oh like they're skip ahead a couple of minutes if you have yeah. a, a queasy stomach yeah so okay i'm gonna try and get a story in a couple of minutes no i will okay so a couple of minutes time now right um so basically his friend had hooked up with this girl and um i think they had maybe had hooked up once before but it was definitely like a casual thing and um they had like were playing around with food you know mm-hmm um Food and play. for I'm some aware. reason yeah mm-hmm. uh for some reason <laughs> they thought that like menthos 
would be something good. I think because of like the minty tingling sensation. Oh no. Oh, you you have no idea. So, <laughs> oh god. So he puts a couple up her. I don't. I don't know. I, don't know. Uh, I have no answers for that. Um, and he proceeds to go down on her, uh-huh. and he pulls them out with his tongue. And he pull. Oh god. He pulls out. He pulls out. Oh, he pulls out one more. Than what he remembers putting in. What? And it, it turns out it wasn't a menthos. When you think about how big and how hard menthos menthos are, uh-huh. menthos are. I don't know what the plural of is that of that is. M- menthosorum. Sure. It was a cyst. What? Yeah. Oh my god! It literally, it literally makes me feel so sick. But yeah, and he did not see her again after that. Of course not. I know. Of course not. Did I know? Did she go to a doctor? I hope. I don't know. I did not ask any follow up questions. I was done. I was so done. So I feel- like I I don't often have a limit, but I reached it. Here, he got me to reach my limit. <laughs> the direction I thought this story was going to go was yeah. you put the menthos in. You take uh-huh. the menthos out, you do the hokey pokey. Um, no, you put the menthos <laughs> in, and then you follow that up with some soda, and you create <laughs> the fountain. I wish that story had ended that way. I really wish, instead of what I had to offer. Instead of a medical emergency. <laughs> instead of just absolute vomit spill. <laughs> just, that is oh. horrifying. It's horrible, right? I, I, it is. It's just the, oh, it's the the texture. Oh, oh, no thanks. No thank you. No thank you. Um, it has ruined menthos mints for me, or any mint of that type for me forever. I think. All right. So here's what we've learned. Like we're <laughs> that we're going on two hours here, so we're gonna wrap this up. But sorry. No. 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 Don't you ever apologize for that. I always feel this is my fault. <laughs> so here's what we've learned, I I, I think. One, uh, don't let anybody uh, a- apply an unnecessary stigma on one-night stands. That yes. you can enjoy a one-night stand just for what it is. And it can be valuable in a lot of ways. So don't, uh, don't attach guilt to it unless, you know, it, there's a reason to. Um, yes. Like if you shag in your friend and he's crushed. <laughs> yes, something like that. Or, you know, you almost throw vodka Nesquik up on a, <laughs> a, a gentleman's chest. Um, yes, I am both sorry to Michelle and the person whose name I can't remember. <laughs> and uh, be sure if you've got a mirror in the bedroom that you're checking out the blowjobs. <laughs> I'm gonna regret I, every because we record so late, and every morning after we record, I wake up thinking, "Ah, oh, shit." <laughs> Fourth, Happy Death Day is a really good movie. Yes. And fifth, uh, take stock of your Mentoses. Well, uh, <laughs> both before and after love making. <laughs> That's, I mean, just keep keep a bottle of RC Cola handy, and you just, <laughs> you pour a little in, and you just go after whatever fizzes. <laughs> no, as a woman, I am telling you, do not do that. <laughs> I'm telling you as a scientist. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, it'll, maybe I haven't had that happen, but maybe, uh, maybe it'll be a nice fizzy sensation you, you just have you have to use vaseline first you have to protect the walls right sure you yeah. get uh an iud <laughs> <laughs> and so there those are the five big lessons uh that you should take away from this particular episode. oh my god um, yeah definitely as always Kate. <sighs> Not only could I, I not do this without you, who who on earth would want to? Who would want? Oh, right. Sorry, I thought you said who would want. I thought you meant who on earth would want to do this with me. No, 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 no. 
It, uh, it, it's, Thank you. Uh, it, that was purely a compliment. It was, Thank you very much. Um, but for <laughs> for folks who are not currently subscribed to Edenism, then <laughs> be sure that you you pitch this in the time we have remaining. Uh, yeah. So uh, Edenism stands for Eternal Darkness of Not So Spotless Minds. It's me and my lovely friend and co-host Matt. Uh, Matt Wood, we have um, a movie, like a dark movie podcast where we talk about movies that are on the darker side of things. Uh, but it's a very lighthearted show to contrast that. And we just chat nonsense and take the piss out of each other and chat movies. And, and that's that's kind of it. There's a few bits of stuff that you normally expect and a few bits of stuff you don't normally expect. And you can find that on all of your normal places like Apple and Google and Stitcher and Spotify. And uh, you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram. Excellent. So yeah. And, uh, and, and if you're listening to this, uh, you're already subscribed to the dark parade. Uh, but uh, do me a favor and uh, leave a, uh, a Mentos laden review. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tell us your Mentos experience. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't. Um, well, and, oh, do. <laughs> and we'll be back in a month to do more of this. And, and as we were uh, saying earlier, uh, please, uh, if you have a story about uh, love or romance uh, that you would like to hear us goof on, then... Yeah. Or uh, terrible, terrible sex experience. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, the worse, the better. It can't, it can't yeah. be bad enough. Um, it can't be worse than what I just said, can it? So <laughs> oh, I, do you I don't really know. Actually, maybe I was going to say, like, the internet is a dark, dark place. So, <laughs> but yeah, you can uh, hit us up on on Facebook. You can uh, find me at dark uh, dark parade four slash groups four slash dark parade, and you can find me there and message me privately if you don't want uh, your name to be revealed. You can also find me on Twitter at dark parade pod. Uh, the eternal darkness of the uh, wait eternal. How did have <laughs> I lost darkness. this? It's, it's fine everyone does even we do um eternal darkness of not so spotless minds there you go there's a facebook group for that and you can also message uh, uh kate privately and yep, yep. uh and so you can do this all all quiet like and we won't we won't reveal no, we won't name and shame this, but uh no uh but thank you very much for listening thank you for for sharing the show around um it is a, a delight to see that a number of people uh, listen to this nonsense, and I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate it too. Thank you. So uh, we'll be back in a month, and uh, in the meantime, plenty of other dark parade stuff coming. So uh, we will see you then. See you later.